Welcome back to Investor Intel on a cold and rainy day in Burlington, Ontario. Today we're with Carol Clip from London. How are you? I am fine, Peter. Thank you very much for having me on. We have a beautiful blue sky today for a change. So I hope I will send some of it to you today. <laughs> That'd be nice. So for our last talk of the year, let's talk about International Lithium, where you are the, the executive chair. International Lithium is a fairly well-known company with a fairly well-known story. But you've hit milestones lately that are important to the investors. So, last time we talked about London black cabs, that the first electric cabs are now running in London. Can you talk about this for us? Yeah, that's true, Peter, that's true. All this world is changing so fast. I would like to start with one but very important number. It's 2,898%. This is the jump in demand for lithium, which UBS estimates will happen in 100% EV world. 2,898%. That's from the UBS report, right? Yeah, that's right. It's from the UBS report, not from my blog anymore. By the way, all our viewers should check it, right? With all latest updates. The greatest demand in the UBS report would have been for lithium, second was for cobalt. And for those of you who haven't read it, UBS tore a Chevy Volt apart and said, if every car was made like this, how would that affect world commodities? That's it's totally right. And Peter. number one exactly was lithium. And number one was lithium with incredible 2,898%. Cobalt was following the second one. And what it means that electric cars are coming at a much faster pace than a lot of people are still anticipating it. For years I have been writing it on my blog about this electric future. Now it's happening. Iconic London cab is going electric. And you know what makes the difference, Peter? You are meeting a lot of investors with your very interesting cobalt company, right? I'm doing the same now with our international lithium. I used to call people for weeks to get just an appointment. Now everybody calling me and our team is out there telling the story. And you know what's interesting? You come in to meet investment bankers and now they driving Teslas. Yeah. Or they come into a meeting in now electric black cab. So you don't have to prove anything anymore. It's very symbol symbolic for me because electric cars are here. And if you're interested what's happening here, particularly on this side of the pond in the UK right now, right? We just managed to make a very important number when electric car sales in UK jumped over 2% in total, car sales in UK, and now we pushed 2.4% mark. Right. And just a few short months ago, all the world was just crossing the so important 1% mark for electric cars. So let's talk big picture then. Globally in 2018, how many electric vehicles do you think will be sold? It's a great question, Peter. And now we should really look at this big picture and not a lot of people still realizing it that we are having after I call it after Tesla's earthquake, we have a tsunami of electric cars coming in now into the world. It took us all our history as a humankind to reach one million electric cars on the road by 2015. And then it took us just a little bit over one year, still less than two years, to make it two million electric cars on the roads in the world. And answering your question, I think personally next year we will cross another milestone when we will sell one million electric vehicles all over the world, when we will account also for very important uh, niche like electric buses and electric trucks. Right, and power walls and, and everything else. Now, I happen to think that Tesla is not a disruptive car company. In 10 years, when you look at who's going to be doing the large car sales, it'll still be GM and Honda and Chevy. And Tesla will be a bit player in that market. But they may disrupt the power industry. They could fundamentally change the nature of that. Yes, Peter, yes. And again, it's still quite 
new things for a lot of investors, then it's very important for people like us, you know, to go out there, just to point out to the people where they should look for the next big thing, because it's not only our talk anymore in the bar, how we like to do it in Toronto, Vancouver, when we meet, right? <laughs> it's happening. It's happening on our streets. And now, you know, why it's so important? Why UBS is important here? Because it happened to be number one in the world bank in the wealth management. So they have all these very wealthy guys. And now it's not just us, you and me, telling our story about electric cars, lithium, cobalt, nickel, whatever is, else is needed. Now they're telling their clients, guys, you better look. Lithium demand sh will shoot up 2,898% in the 100 EV world. And now Bloomberg is telling Guys, it's going to be 200 new electric car models by year 2020, Peter. Amazing. So within International Lithium, you have a few different projects that can supply that demand. Uh, you had recent pulp results out at your famous Mariana project in Argentina. How did, tell us about those pump results. Yes, Peter, it's correct. Just recently, a couple of weeks ago, we reported about another major milestone for development of our Mariana Lithium project. First of all, I should remind our viewers that we are advancing this project in joint venture operations with Genfeng Lithium. And Genfeng Lithium is the largest integrated lithium producer in the world from China. And now Genfeng managed to become within top five lithium material producers in the world on par with such giants of our industry as Albemar, right. SQM, Gangfeng, TIG, and FMC. Right. And Gang, so so, so Gangfeng mm -hmm. is G-A-N-G-F-A-N-G. -G -G. The yes, that's correct. And they're the world's largest lithium producer uh, processor. Exactly, exactly. They are leading so-called lithium converters and most of them now are situated and located in China, of course. Right. So why these results are so important? We managed to produce three different levels of continuous pumping from our solar, starting from 10 liters per second, 20 liters per second, and 30 liters per second. And already these results will be great because some solars can pump only 18 liters per second, for example. But even more dramatic, we had results as high as 60 liters per second, but we were very conservative, so we reported from 10 to 30 continuous pumping. And next year, 2018, it will be a very important task for us to confirm in continuous pumping that we can, we can pump 60 liters per second. I will translate a few geological lithium brine mumbo jumbo. Basically, our aquifer demonstrates a very big potential, potentially, for production because we can pump very big amount of material without negatively affecting our solar bright system, yes. without affecting the level. And what is very important, basically, is that now we have another confirmation that this aquifer system demonstrates a very high transmissivity, high hydraulic uh, conductivity, and significant storativity. Translating it in a pure Canadian, as you know, which we are speaking today, and at least I'm trying, it means that nothing is limiting our potential production from the solar right. in, in the meaning of that we can produce very important numbers extracting these materials in order to be later uh, being processed either by conventional method with evaporation, as you know. Yes. And maybe you can ask me a second question. We reported in September very interesting results of report of proof of a concept study of lithium extraction using by membrane technology. Right. So I was saving the membrane technology for later. Uh, you have two other pumps that are planned, right? Yes, 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 that's correct. And this is what we are discussing right now with our joint venture partner, Genfeng Lithium. And here I must mention uh, very important topics which we already discussed in our latest news release. So we will conduct this uh, free additional pumping test. In total, it will be uh, 
in order to achieve further continuation of 60 liters per second. At, but at, if, at Mariana or somewhere else? At Mariana. Everything is at Mariana. We are talking about Mariana right now. And we hope that this uh, studies will be finished in the second half of the year. But now we are preparing our budget when we will have two major milestones for our project. It will be preliminary economic assessment, and number two, it will be pre-feasibility studies. Okay, great. So then that takes us down to the membrane separation proof of concept. Yeah. A lot of yeah. There's a lot of technology to extract lithium, extract in the loosest sense. Uh, much of the intellectual property is still trapped in China. Tell us about the membrane technology you're looking at. Yes, and this is correct. For example, like our strategic partner, Confirmed Lithium, they have more than 20 patents just for extraction of lithium from different uh, chemical compositions. So basically, they are one of the most advanced technological companies in the world who can extract lithium basically from everything, starting from lithium sodium concentrate, concentrated brine, and finishing even with recycling. But this time we are talking about independent study, which is very important, which was done by a company called Synexus from South Africa. And basically what they gave us a few short months ago, they gave us the confirmation that lithium could be produced directly from our raw brine using this cutting-edge advanced membrane separation and extraction uh, technology. So lithium was selectively recovered from the raw brine to produce lithium hydroxide. And Peter, right. you know more than anybody else that lithium hydroxide is a high-value ingredient used directly in lithium battery manufacturing as a final product like, for example, Panasonic is using in order to produce lithium cathode, which Tesla later using in order to produce lithium batteries. Right. So why this report was so important and what is important, Peter, here, as you know, with all our junior mining stories and market in general, you can talk forever. But it's very important when Mr. Market, as Warren Buffett called, calls this beast, right? start finally to listen to you, start to appreciate you. And basically after that report in September, finally our share price start to show at least some appreciation of all our hard work. And we are finishing this year very strongly on the highest level of uh, our share price in years. And of course, why it's happening? Because now investors can see at our Mariana and they know, okay, we know that there is a conventional way, already proven technology, which is very important, how to extract lithium. Suddenly, these guys have something else. And for example, if something will go wrong with conventional technology, and you know, it's always a combination of cost and time, yep. and it's like a diff different chemical soup. Every single salary is unique chemical signature. Now we already have a proven first level of bench testing, lithium hydroxide would be produced directly. Yeah. What it means to translate it to our potential investors or viewers or industry followers, it means that we can have a possible alternative to the natural evaporation process currently proposed at Mariana. Basically, this technology could provide a process route to produce lithium hydroxide directly from the raw brine without need to remove Contaminants like magnesium, by lining, it all means time and cost, right? And then based on our initial estimates, the technology can achieve even higher recoveries than natural evaporation, even with relatively low concentration of lithium. So you're I am personally... You're talking yeah. about the potential for higher production at a lower cost in less time. Exactly, exactly. And what is the critical point here? For me personally, why I'm personally still investing in this company, and this year, as you know, uh, in my recent interviews, I introduced you to, to the new company at ALC, particularly I would like to mention my deputy chairman, John Wisby, who is coming from very extensive banking, bank route, who checked everything in our company in very extensive due diligence, and then he became a, my co-investor last year. And then I was happy to join him with these other directors. 
So what is happening here? Basically now, I do not worry about chemical signature of our solar at all. Because I have a further confirmation, one or another way, this solar works. We can produce lithium. And now next year will be crucial, and hopefully we will develop new valuation milestones when we will test economical potential. What exactly process should we implement? All traditional evaporation, right. something new, or as you know in mining, what are the most dangerous walls? New technology. Yeah. Maybe we will make a combination of it, right? All right, so then let's quickly talk about Mavis. What's yes. Happen what's happening at Mavis? That's a hard rock project, right? Exactly. It's a hard rock project, and you should look at the map on our website. So it's very interesting concept. I like it, particularly when we are talking about security of lithium supply, because as you heard, Chinese companies are here, Chinese companies are there, it's all beautiful. Now they're controlling already maybe close to 75% of lithium hydroxide market. What's going to happen in a few short years when everybody will be jumping on electric car bank market, right? And you know that some people will consider it that I have outrageous estimations but now, more and more, we are moving there, market is realizing that in order to have all our commitments to global warming, climate change, you call it whatever you like, but just to keep the temperature rise, temperature increase below 2 uh, degrees centigrade by 2040, we need to have 600 million electric cars on the road. It's not my estimation, it's from wait for it, International Energy Agency. And when I calculated it, everybody should check it, of course, they can find all this data on my blog. It's 36 million tons of lithium carbonate equivalent LSE must be produced by 2040. Our starting point, Peter, if you could believe it, 200,000 tons produced in 2016. Okay. So it's nothing. So, and I'm not alone here, as you know, we met together with you, CTO of Lithium Americas, former gentleman from Tesla itself, yeah, uh, David Derrick, and he is talking about production to be, uh, we need to increase production of lithium to 1 million tons per year, first, then to 3 million tons per year, and keep it at this level for maybe like 20 years, just in order to electrify right. All um, transportation. Good. We will uh, check in with you again, uh, probably around the mining show. You're coming to Toronto, I assume, for the mining yes. show in March? Yes, Peter. Yes, I'm looking forward to meet this whole team at Investor Intel. And using this opportunity, I would like to extend all our warmest regards from all our team at International Lithium to all your team at Investor Intel, to you personally. And uh, happy holidays, happy new year. And I will not afraid it. Merry Christmas if you still celebrate. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. Have a wonderful day.